open back up. We should do this like when we can touch each other. <laughs> so, I'm yes. teach like a proper crop class out there. It'd be awesome to have you down to do some JKD with our people. So, I'm all about it, man. That would be tons of fun for sure. Love it. That'd Great. be tons of fun. Cool. We're getting a nice little, nice little group here. Awesome. Nice. Good. What's up, Trey? Hey, man. Hey, what's up, Trey? Good to see you. Man. How are you, Jeff? Good to see you, hey, sir. Right. How, uh, how are you ha hanging in there? Oh, you know, hanging like my beard is, dude. I was going to say, you're getting that quarantine scruff. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Looks like you're kind of on your way with that as well, yeah. Jeff. I know, I'm getting scruffy. Uh, I don't necessarily like how it comes in, but Casey likes it. So I'm like, until I have to go out in public, I guess it can stay. But it probably won't last. Oh, by the way, I'm uh, sort of repping. I, I was like, I have only one Krav shirt, and it's the one I got from the, uh, you know, from the other place. So I was like, well, that wouldn't really fit. And I was like, I do have Amy's shirt. Yeah, so, that's awesome. I would like at some point to get one of your uh, Austin Impact shirts as well. Yeah, I won't complain about that. We actually have really cool ones. I mean, we've always had cool ones, but uh, I kind of switched up the last one. So now it has like a very, um, very Jeet Kune Do looking like guy side kicking somebody in the kneecap. Are you talking about this one? Who's wearing, this one's yeah, I was going to say, oh, look nice. at Mariah right there. That's awesome. Isn't that kind of cool? That might if, be uh, if bad you you got to switch to right wing. What'd you say, Trey? I said, whenever you wear it, Jeff, you have to fight now, rightly. Yeah, you have to go southpaw. <laughs> no. no, I'm going to cure you guys of all it's that Kevin. bullshit today. No, no, no southpaws in my classes. It's a rule. <laughs> uh, southpaws are the devil. <laughs> they really are. Uh -huh. It's good for you guys, man. Orthodox people get a lot fewer reps fighting you guys than you guys get fighting Orthodox. Oh. I'll do a little like intro in for okay. you. Yeah, whenever you're whenever you're ready. Um, cool. I'll give it to, to seven o'clock. Okay. See if anybody quick, else. I posted on it in our group, and I'll just do a quick reminder that we're going live. I but I did. It's similar to a lesson I taught recently, and I did warn them of that. So maybe I should have lied to them. Ah, uh, yeah. What's up, Art? Hey, Coach. What's up, Liz? What's up, Justin? Mariah, Scott? Is that Justin Taylor, Trey? That I know. What's that? Is, it, is that Justin that I know? All in it? No, okay, no. Oh, oh, yeah, that Justin. Uh, he probably won't. Uh, I th he just does our fitness classes. That's what but, I thought. Uh, all right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. What's up, Manoj? Um, so, for those of you do that don't know Jeff, uh, Jeff, what's up, Kevin? Hey, how are you? Jeff? Good, good. Uh, Jeff Isaacson is one of the head coaches and owners of Krav Maga ATX, a gym down south. He was my primary instructor and sparring partner for uh, probably about a year to a year and a half, somewhere in there, somewhere in that vicinity. And um, uh, I learned a lot from him, A, on how to try to deal with a tall person. Uh, we had lots of good ex exchanges. Some days uh, I got – uh, my butt kicked and some days I think I came out a little ahead but uh, most Definitely. days it was pretty even so it, it was a fun game of cat and mouse it always seemed like if I solved the problem if I figured out what to do against him against him then he would figure out what to do against what I figured out the last time so it was a lot of fun um, very evenly matched I'd say anyway uh, but even more so I learned a lot from him as an instructor with the way that he worked with people. And so uh, a lot of, a, a lot of what I think is for the positive in, in my skills as an instructor, I do have to uh, thank Jeff Isaacson for that. So um, 
anyway, with, the, with all that said, he has done an event with us in the past at the park. And uh, so he is familiar with a uh, handful of you guys. He hates South Paws, so he'll hate some of you guys. Most all of us, because we're almost all South Paws. That means if you put your right foot in front, that's considered being a South Paw. So he hates us. He hates me um, for that reason. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to hand the time over to him. He's going to take you through a, a virtual uh, workout, and you'll download a lot of good information. So thanks for being on here, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me, Forrest. Um, just real quick, Forrest basically already said everything I wanted to say. Me and Forrest trained together for a little over a year. Um, one of the best martial artists I've ever shared a classroom with. Um, and he has more than once said that he took away a lot from my classes, which to me was a big relief because I spent every class going, oh God, I don't know as much as this guy. <laughs> I'm a total fake. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's just a really big honor to teach for Forrest and to teach with you guys. I had a great time when we came out before. Um, my intention is today we're gonna go through sort of how I break down building into a shadow boxing routine. This is something I know I've struggled with a lot in my training, perhaps you guys have as well. And one of my striking coaches kind of led me through what I call a stair step process to build into shadow boxing. Hopefully it'll open you guys up a little bit. Um, uh, but we're gonna just, we're gonna do like a real, like super quick warm up, just get our bodies moving. Um, and then we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna spend basically the better part of an hour just looking at discrete pieces of shadow boxing and then how I like to kind of put them all together. Um, th this is my way of combating. And I don't know, maybe Forrest is nicer than us, but whenever we go, all right guys, shadow boxing, go. Everyone goes like, oh shit, I don't even know how to start. Um, I've, I've developed this sort of like ladder to get me there. Um, and hopefully you guys will, uh, will pick that up as well. Um, fair warning, I was telling Forrest, I've got you guys on a laptop and it's like a stride away from me. So if you need my attention, feel free to unmute yourself and say something because I won't see a hand raised. I unfortunately can't really see, see you guys. Um, we're gonna get right into it. We're just gonna start off with a real quick jumping jacks. Oh, Don't also real quick, um, just while uh, I'm, I put you on, uh, as we're getting a bunch of people in, the squares keep getting tinier and tinier. So I put you on speaker view, but I don't know if that's just on my computer. Did, can somebody, can you guys give me a thumbs up if, if he's big on your computer right now too? Okay, Kevin says yes, Luis says yes, awesome. If he's small on anybody's, up in the top uh, right hand corner, there should be a thing that says uh, speaker view, but um, awesome, all right, thanks. Nice. Oh yeah, absolutely. I actually can only see Forrest right now, so I'm gonna fix oh. that. <laughs> there we go, all right, so. Um, first things first, we're just going to start off with jumping jacks. Just, just get your body moving. Again, if you have downstairs neighbors, don't cause an incident. Just nice and light, full fingertips extended right here. I'm going to do real, real quick warm up motions. I know it's not a workout class. They bust you guys' asses plenty in other classes. Good. We're going to go right from this into squats. When we squat, we're going to keep the weight in our heels. We're gonna push our butt back before we go down. A lot of you guys are gonna be able to squat deeper than me. That's fine, do it. Uh, but just think kind of like I'm looking for a toilet in the dark and back up. Really think about pushing the hips forward so we get in a good proper stance so that we're not ending in this sort of broken spine position. Good, squat back up. Two more here. We're going right from there into what I call a three-step stretch. So we're gonna go high knee, one, two, three. And then on the third one, when we put our foot down, we're just gonna to touch the ground. And then we go one, two, three, touch the ground. Just try to get a slight stretch in the hamstring. If you're still cold, don't blow your hamstring out. One, two, three, and stretch. Ah. Two more of these. Good. From here, we're just going to pick that knee up. We're going to extend our hips slightly. We're going to put it down, and then we're just going to throw a front kick. Knee up, snap the shin, and put it back down. Again, there's no target. We're still warming up. It doesn't need to be like 
a soccer kick. We're just thinking about hip extension, light kick, and then switch your feet. Knee up and kick. Switch your feet on your own. Two more here. And the last one, that was actually three. Ah, I was an English major, math is not my strong suit. Cool, so we're gonna get in a good fighting stance. We're gonna talk a little bit more about fighting stance in a second, but all we're gonna do here is for about 20 seconds, we're just gonna throw light straight punches. Let me start my timer so I'll be able to keep an eye on it. These are not, this is warm up, right? We're not trying to like destroy the earth. We're just gonna be nice light fighting stance and I'm just thinking about steady movement. What we're trying to work on is not feeling wobbly. So on my go, we're gonna go 20 seconds, light punches, left, right, left, right, and go. If you're feeling yourself wobble, probably means your stance isn't wide enough or you are leaning a lot on it. Don't wanna be googly whenever we're throwing punches. Five seconds. Good, and rest. We're just gonna go right into back clappers. All that means is palms out, we hug ourselves, and then we switch. I like to think when I go palms out, I turn my thumbs back, so I got bad posture, right? So it helps me open my chest, and then we clap. In five seconds, we're gonna go right back into straight punches. If you work in both stances, switch stances this time. Good fighting stance and go. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. Back into those back clappers. But now we're gonna think wider right just opening up i want to think about kind of pinching my back together my shoulder blades uh, going left over right then right over left we're going to do one more 20 seconds of punching in three seconds three two one and go Go five more seconds, four, three, two, one, and rest, shake it up. Grab some water real quick if you need it. And then we're gonna circle back up and we're gonna get right into it. I'll give you guys 20 seconds here and then we'll circle back up. As we go through this, I'm gonna talk about a lot of concepts. Um, and if I blow past something that you're not familiar with, or I'm using terminology that doesn't match up with your terminology, feel free to let me know and we can take a step back and, uh, and work on it. All right, let's go ahead and center back up, shake it out. We're gonna start building on this shadow boxing routine. So first things first, what I like to think about is I'm gonna establish a good fighting stance. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the specifics of a fighting stance because you guys stand different than I do, first of all. And I don't super care whether you're orthodox, whether you're southpaw, whether you stand bladed, I'm sorry, square, bladed, whatever your stance is, that's fine. Um, but there's a couple of things, regardless of your stance, that I like to look out for. Number one is hands up. This is my worst. Super, super bad at this. Um, so. Sounds like somebody's encountering some lag. Let me know if we're having steady problems there. Um, hands up in front of my face. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tuck my chin. This is another big one. We have a tendency, at least I do, when I punch, I wanna look over the top and our chin comes up. So I'm gluing my chin to my chest. I'm looking through the tops of my eyes and I wanna bend my front, I wanna bend both my knees, but in particular, 
I want you to focus on that lead leg. We have a tendency when we move to let this leg lock out, or when we get tired, we'll lock it out. I've been kicked hard in a locked out leg here. I don't recommend it. So our fighting stance, regardless of exactly what yours looks like, should have hands up, chin down, and a bend in the knees. Find your fighting stance, and all we're gonna do to start is we're gonna start building our head movement. And I don't mean like reactionary head movement, like I read a punch and I wanna slip it. I mean more passive head movement to make myself a harder target. So when I'm in my fighting stance, all we're gonna do is when I say go, I'm gonna think about taking kind of like a micro slip off to my left. And it doesn't matter whether you're right-handed or left-handed, we're just gonna go left, um, true left. So when I say go, I'm gonna think about bringing my head offline, bringing my right shoulder forward slightly, and then returning back to center. Just a little slip offline. I'm just thinking like, I'm right under the M in Krav Maga right now, I don't wanna be there, boom. So on my go, we're just gonna pull a quick slip and then we're gonna to return to center. And go. And go. And go. And go. One more and go. Good, so off to the right, same thing. Turning my left shoulder, bringing my head offline, and then coming back to center. Just like our punches, I don't want to feel wobbly. That usually means I'm leaning instead of rotating, right? So when I go, we're going to slip to the right and go. 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 One more time and go. Good. Now we're just going to put those together. I say go, and I'm going to slip left, right, back to center. On my go and go. Go, 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 one more and go, good. So questions on that, everyone feel all right on that? If you do, just unmute yourself and let me know. Um, we're just gonna hang out here just for a second longer. All we're gonna do now is when I say go, you're gonna do two slips and I don't care in which direction or whether they're the same side or not, right? So just two in any direction. So if I say go, I could go left, right. I could go right, left. But I could also think left, left, or right, right. Doesn't matter to me. We're just gonna do five of these and I want you to mix it up. So when I say go, we're gonna slip twice and then reset and go. 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 Two more and go. One more and go. Good. So continuing to build our head movement. Now, instead of double slipping, I'm going to slip in one direction, excuse me, and then I'm going to roll in the other. And just like our slips, this doesn't need to be like a huge bobbin. Like I'm not like, this isn't like Trey's big ogre hand coming at me and I've got to like get way out of the way. We're just thinking small movements. Remember, when I bob and weave or I roll, all I'm thinking about doing is making this small U in the air with my head. There's a slight bend in my knees to change level. So I go slip, roll, and then I'm gonna come back to center. And we're just gonna do that together. So when I say go, we're gonna go left, right, back to center, and go. 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 One more and go. Good, other direction, we go right, left, back to center, and go, 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 go. Good, so what we're trying to do here is we're building, in this case, a very small library of head movement that we should be doing not just when we think or know a punch is coming, but when we're holding still. So if I'm fighting somebody particularly, like, I can't tell you how many times Forrest blasted me in the face with a straight left that went right between my hands and took my head off. And it's because I wasn't moving my head at all. So when he and I are squaring up, if I'm doing this, he has a target. But if I'm doing this, yeah, he has a target, but it's much harder to hit, right? So I'm thinking about slips, slips and rolls, or double slips to pull myself back to center. And my goal is not to be utterly random, but to not be predictable, right? So first thing I like to establish 
fighting stance. Bent knee, hands up, chin down. Number two, head move. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do this together, is we're gonna go about 30 seconds, no foot movement, no punches. All we're gonna do is we're gonna find our fighting stance and we're just gonna try to keep our head from being in the center. So for 30 seconds, we're just gonna sit here and move our heads. And again, this should be small so that we don't feel like we're rocking. We're still in the fight. We're still engaged with this person. We're just making ourselves a little bit harder to hit. So when I say go, we're gonna do this together. Just 30 seconds. I know it feels silly, but trust me, it'll protect your jaw quite a bit. Let's go in three, two, one. Avoid the temptation to move your feet a lot. Just think slips, bobs, as we come back to center, then go another direction. Double slips into our roll, slip to both sides. If you, if you get lost, just slip a little bit, it's okay. Better to be predictable and moving than predictable and not moving, right? Let's go 10 more seconds. Good and time. Shake it out real quick. Questions on any of that? Everyone feeling all right? Cool. So we're going to add on some foot movement with this. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about like, you guys that are taught by Forrest, he's got better movement than I do. So you guys know how to open and close in directions. You know how to step and pivot. I'm not going to spend too much time on that getting fancy because what the focus I want is that in between my movements, I'm back into head movement, right? So wherever I go, I'm going right back into that movement. Maybe as I slip, I use that to pivot. But more than anything, we're trying to avoid stepping and pivoting and then ending with our heads in the air, right? I like to think about it like if you're playing Street Fighter and you stop hitting buttons, you know all the characters do a like idle animation of some kind. I try to make this my idle animation. If I'm not doing anything else, I ought to be moving my head. So we're gonna do, this time we're gonna go 45 seconds. We're gonna move our feet a little bit. Doesn't need to be dramatic. We're just gonna keep moving as we move our feet. We're also thinking about moving our head. Remember, bend in the knees, hands up, chin down. On my go, we got 45 seconds. Three, two, one, and go. Open, close. Step and pivot as you know it, but just keep your head active. Is your chin down? Are your hands up? Mine are probably dropping. We all do it. Ten seconds here, guys. Keep going. Good. Shake it out. Okay. So, still no punches. I know. Everyone wants to punch. We're going to do that exact same thing, but now I want some hand movement. And again, not punches, but like feints. So, when I'm moving around, I'm moving my head. I want to think about moving my hands like I'm initiating a punch. Whether that's starting to pop a jab or a cross, I also like to think about parries, right? Maybe bringing my elbow forward like it's an uppercut. If you like to grapple, I can change level, right? But before I'm throwing any punches, before I'm throwing any kicks, we're going to establish our fighting stance. We're going to establish our head movement. We're gonna establish our foot movement, and then we're gonna to start to establish things. Little snaps of our shoulder, it should feel, you should want to throw the punch, but it doesn't come out. We're gonna do another 45 second round, just movement and feints with your hands. That could be uppercuts, hooks, body shots, straight punches. I don't care as long as they look mean, right? So 
on my go. We're gonna go three, two, one, movement, chin down, knees bent. And active hands. Go five more seconds, guys. Keep it moving. Move your head, hands up. Good, and rest. Grab some water if you guys need it. If you have questions before we get going on throwing some punches, let me know. We're gonna get right into punching here in a second. Something that you, those of you who spar a fair bit, may be cognizant of or may not, it took me a while to start to understand this, is if my hands aren't moving passively, it, I become much easier to defend, right? So if I'm looking at you and we're gonna fight, and the only time my hands move are when I'm throwing a punch, the second I do this, you should be slipping it, blocking it, or punching me, right? But, if I'm always presenting something, whether it's, you know, some people do this like sorcery, some people really faint like they're snapping, it becomes a lot harder to defend them. So we want to be making kind of little micro defenses, but also little micro attacks as we move. As we do this, the well, first thing we're going to add on is just our jab. And I, Start with just the jab because I want all the other pieces in play, right? So we start, establish our fighting stance, chin down, hands up. We move our head, we move our feet, we start fainting, and then somewhere in there, <coughs> we'll start working in jabs. And I want to think good, tight, snapping jabs, right? My elbow is down, a little hip pop behind it, snap it out and recoil. But we don't need to jab every time. Right? It's, we're not walking and jabbing. We're moving. We're establishing position. And off of those jabs, we're back into movement. So we're going to move, we're going to faint, and we're going to jab. All we're going to do for 45 seconds, find a little bit of space, chin down, hands up. Good feints, good foot movement. In three, two, one, let's go. Move it around. Move your head. Snap that jab. Are you moving your head off your jab? Are you moving your feet off your jab? Is your chin coming up? Is your other hand coming down? These are all the things we're checking in on as we shadow box. It's not just our time. To play with cool combinations, it is that too. <laughs> but it's our time to fix little things that when a real person is punching us, we don't have the time and focus to do, right? <laughs> 10 seconds here. I think I took you way longer than 45 when I was talking. Good, and rest. Last thing we're going to add on is our cross. For me, my right, you guys, here, most of you guys, your left. Movement, feint, jabs, and occasional jab crosses, or double jab crosses, or if you're real silly, again, Forrest has a really good just step through cross. I don't have a problem with that. But all these pieces, right? When we jump right in, we can get lost. So, chin down, hands up, bend in the knees, head movement, foot movement. We're fainting, we're jabbing, 
and we're adding in our cross. Good hip movement, good snap. Another 45 second round on my go. And go. Move your feet, chin down, hands up, faint. Jab. <coughs> I just got lost. I stopped moving my head. It happens. That's why we're doing it. Good long crosses with our shoulders rotating through, but then we're moving off of it. Go 15 seconds, guys. If you get lost for a second, just move. Move your head, faint. And then when you're feeling it again, you got your breath back, boom, snap the jab, hit them. Good and rest. Good work. Grab some water, guys. Yeah, shadow bot without even without hitting a pad, you should be able to get sweaty, right? When we sort of increment out these rounds, they're hard work. All right, as we circle back up, if anyone has any questions, give me a yell. I'm going to give you guys about 20 seconds, catch your breath, and then we're going to get into it. Oh. One downside of being bald is you have nothing to contain the sweat. It just comes off in rivets. Okay, so what I'm going to do with you guys, I'm going to do it along with you. We're going to do, let me reset this timer. We're going to do a full, not a full shadow box area, but we're going to do a long shadow box area. We're going to do a minute and a half. And again, I know people feel funny shadow boxing. I can't even see you guys. Everyone else is thinking about themselves anyway, so don't worry about it. But this is how I build, like when somebody says, all right, Jeff, shadow box, this is how I build myself into it. But I do it in, you know, we don't do it in 20 minute chunks, but I go, okay, fighting stance, move my head. Now I can move my feet. Now I faint a little bit. Then I'll start establishing my jab. And once I feel good there, I'll start moving into my cross. And then once I've sort of established these basic movements, my basic range, then those of you who know it, I think most of you guys will, start putting in your other combinations, your other punches. If you guys feel comfortable kicking in your uh, quarantine space, throw some kicks in there. You guys have better kicks than me, so use them. Um, but think about it in those steps so that when you hear shadow boxing, you're not drowning, right? We're not going, uh, I guess I'm doing uppercut across and everything else is wrong. We're making sure I'm gonna fight. That means I need a fighting stance. That means I need defense and movement. I need to be offering something back. I need strikes. And just like that, I suddenly start feeling like I'm in the flow a little bit, right? But when I start with everything, it all falls apart. So we're going to go a minute and a half, stair step yourself up to this, and then we're going to take a break and we're going to look at some combo nations. All right, let's get set up. Don't rush it. Stair step yourself up. Make it clean. Three, two, one, and go. Head movement, chin down, foot movement. Are you fainting? Because if you're not, Forrest will block every one of your punches. When you're jabbing, are they snapping jabs? Do you feel like a whip or do you feel like a push? It's the ladder. Now's the time to fix it. Elbow connected to my hip, pop it out and recoil. When I start feeling good on that, all right, feel good on that. Let's start throwing that cross out there. Not every time. Don't have to jab every time either. Just a good hard right hand, left hand, whatever. 
feel like I'm doing pretty good there. Now, maybe I can work into my other combinations. And now I should start really feeling it. When I hit those points where I don't know what I'm doing, reset. Chin down, hands up, move your shoulders, move your feet. Bang. Jab. Jab cross. And then we're back in it, back in the fight. Ten seconds here, guys. Good and rest. Very good. Awesome, guys. Whew. So that's my little, I don't want to call it a secret because someone else taught it to me, but that is my way of making sure that I'm engaging every part of the fight, that I'm not getting lost in just throwing hands where my chin's up in the air, or I'm just doing this and presenting no threat. It's my checklist, fighting stance, head movement, foot movement, banks, attack. And you can build up to that in a matter of seconds, right? But it's like uh, it's like when you go through the pre-flight checklist to make sure everything's ready for takeoff. Before I step in to fight this guy, before I step in on my jab, are all my things in the right order? Or am I about to walk in feeling real sharp and getting blasted in the head? All right, let's hydrate. Oh, let's circle back up. We're gonna do, let's see what time it is. Oh yeah, we got time. We're gonna do a couple of combinations that I particularly like. And then at the end, we're gonna do a longer shadow boxing round together. Um, Cause man, I was telling my students this, this is the time to get good at shadow boxing, right? If you hate shadow boxing, now is the time to learn to love it. If you love it, you should be doing it all the time. This is our time to fix a lot of things that we don't have the luxury to fix when a big guy's throwing punches at us. As we center back up, um, the combinations I'm going to share today are all start with the jab. I'm 6'3". I used to be, I think I'm 6'2 now because of wrestling, but used to be 6'3". So I admit that I lean on the jab a lot. It may not be your style, but we're still going to work some options from there that may or may not work for you. Um, so the first thing we're going to work on is establishing the jab and then retreating out. So if I hit somebody with a jab, Particularly for me, because I'm taller, people like to rush in. So I'm going to hit the jab, and then I'm going to hop out. And we're going to do just that together. We're going to go jab, and as I think about recoiling, I'm driving off my lead foot to open close backwards. So it's jab and move. And then we just reset. Jab and move. On my go, we're going to do that together. Let's make sure we are opening it's easy on this rather than walking backwards, right? So on my go, stiff jab, drive off the front foot, and then reset, and go. Jab, reset. I'm sorry, jab, retreat. And then reset, and go. Reset, go. Reset, go. Reset, go. Reset, one more time, go. Good. Now, instead of just resetting, when we step back in, we're going to throw a jab cross. So my goal here is to jab, move out of the way of the counter, and then move back into range. Um, if you watch Wonder Boy Thompson, which you guys should love him, phenomenal at this. These strikes, and he pulls out, and then he comes back in with counters. One of my favorite things to do as a longer guy. So we're going to go jab. Open, close, and as we come back in, I like to think about counting that out. Like when I step left, sorry, when I step lead, I punch lead. When I step power, I punch power. So it's jab, retreat, jab, cross. On my go, we're going to go jab, retreat, jab, cross, and go. 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 
Go. Two more. Go. One more. Go. Good. So if that's your speed, stick with that. That is an absolutely viable combination. If you're feeling a little bit slicker, you have a little bit of that karate spring in you, we can think about eliminating the step and turning that into a, whoa, my puzzle mat's almost slid out from under me. We can make that a bounce, right? Where I'm throwing my jab, I'm pushing off the lead foot, and before I even really settle here, I'm driving back in off the power. So on my go, we're gonna jab, hop out, hop back in. Or if it's what you're feeling today, nothing wrong with walking in and out. Also, if your footing isn't good. Now I'm spooked, these mats are gonna slide out from under you. So on my go, jab, hop out, jab, cross. And go, 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 go. Go, go, one more, go, reset, very good. So, when we're running straight back in, we might get countered. Again, I have a lot of privilege here because I'm tall, but I like to think off my jab cross, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna put a little bob and weave on it. So I think jab, fade out, and then I'm just cutting an angle in case they're looking for that check hook, right? So I'm gonna go jab, fade out. We go jab, cross. This right for me, my right shoulder's loaded. So that's the direction I'm gonna roll. I really like to think on this. I don't like to think I have been forcibly taught this. When I bob and weave, so if I'm facing straight at you guys here, I wanna make sure I'm not bobbing and weaving completely laterally, that instead I'm cutting a slight angle. I have learned this the hard way. If somebody is standing here and I bob and weave this way, I have given them the angle instead of taking it, right? They're behind my hands. So I'm making sure that I'm turning my chest slightly as I roll, right? So we're gonna go jab, Fade out, cross, roll. And just imagine, or some of you guys have a bob there, which is perfect. I don't want to wind up standing adjacent to bob, I want to face it. So with me, we're going to go jab, fade out, jab, cross, roll. On my go, and go. Reset. Go. Uh, reset. Go. Reset. One more time. Go. Good. Last thing we're going to add on to this, I'm going to leave this kind of freestyle up to you guys. Let's throw something off the bobbin. I don't care what it is. Some uh, studios and forest may have this, have codified counterattacks off our rolls. It can be as easy as jab, cross, roll, jab, cross. If you like to grapple, Man, it's a really good single leg there. But what we want to make sure of, like everything else, is that when I bob and weave, my feet are under me and I'm ready to strike. No good for me to be out here. So we're going to go jab, fade out, back in, roll. And if all you want from here is another jab cross, that's great. But make sure your feet are under you and your hands are able to punch. So again, with me, put it all together. Go, jab, fade out, back in. One, two, roll, counter. And go. Reset. Go. Reset. Go. Reset. Go. Jab, jab, cross, roll, counters. One more just like that and go. Roll. 
Good. Shake it out. Questions on that? This sort of bounce out and back in. You can get good at this. It is killer. Not only if you're, it's great if you're tall, right? Because you can touch people and not get touched back. Um, but it's a really good tall tool for people who are shorter too. If I'm shorter, I may not be able to establish that jab. But when the jab is coming at me, I can follow it back in for counterattacks. Um, really, really good way. But we have to develop that spring. And guess what? Shadow boxing is a great way to do that. Okay, so the other combination I want to share here, it's going to be a little bit simpler, a little bit shorter, because I want to have time to shadow box with you guys. Um, still contingent off the jab. We're going to work sort of second scenario, at least for me. First scenario I think of is I jab, they punch back, right? So I want to move out of range and counter attack. Second scenario, or for me, the one I worry about the most, is those big guys who want to duck their chin and come in swinging. So I'm going to jab, and instead of coming out and then right back in where I'm running into this bulldog, I'm going to jab, and I'm going to throw a check hook on my fade. And I actually watched um, the Jupiter, Jupiter kickboxing guy. Like he did a similar where he's fading out and then stepping off with the check hook. Same idea, right? I'm baiting this person into me. And I'm going to hit him with a hook as I do so. The difference here is instead of uh, cutting an angle on the way back, I want to turn my retreat into an attack. Um, and that's not shit talk. He's awesome. Both are very, very valid. This is just the way I do it because I'm not quick. So I drive off this front foot and I'm turning that into a hook punch. So we're going to go jab, retreating hook. And again, I'm thinking rather than jab, retreat, hook, as I drive off for me my left foot, that's what <clears throat> I rotate off of for this hard shot. With me, we're going to do this together. We're going to go jab, check hook. On my go. Go. <coughs> Reset. Go. <coughs> Reset. Go. <coughs> Reset. Go. <coughs> Good. So, a couple of check ins here. Things that can make this harder. Um, number one thing that I run into is over rotation. If I'm over rotating or reaching on my jab, it becomes really hard to get anything but sort of a, a noodle arm punch. So it's gotta be a compact jab, so my hand is back with me as I retreat. And then on my hook punch, I wanna avoid over rotating on that too, right? So my chest is pointing at the opposite wall here. The tendency I have, and it's a bad one, so don't do it, is this, right? Where I wind up over rotating, it's that same idea. I don't wanna give him this angle. So even though I'm throwing a hard hook punch, I'm staying square to my opponent. So we're looking out for over rotation on our punches. So nice compact punches. With me again, we're gonna jab, retreating hook, and then we should be comfortably facing our opponent. With me, go, reset, go, reset, one more. Go. I don't know why I said one more. We're going to do way more than one more. Reset. Go. Reset. Go. Reset. Go. Reset. Two more here. Go. Reset. One more time. Go. Good. Following that with our big right hand or left hand. Sorry. Forgot. Forrest taught you guys all that southpaw garbage. So we're going to go jab. Retreating hook, straight right hand, right here, straight left hand, straight cross. And again, if I'm over rotating, this cross isn't here, right? That's how we wind up with these winging overhands, and it's not what we want. Nice and tight for a good straight right. On my go, we're going to go jab, retreat, cross. And then we should still be comfortably facing this guy. And go. Reset. Go. 
Reset. Go. Reset. Go. Reset. Let's go two more here. Go. Reset. One more time. Go. Good. So I'm going to give you guys a second option there. Um, actually, we'll, I'll give you guys a couple options there, but we're just going to practice one. If you do over rotate, which you shouldn't do, but you guys with your JKE kicks should be in a good spot, right? My side kicks aren't great. I don't like that counter necessarily, but I, what I do like is a turning side kick from there. Alternatively, spinning back, spinning elbow. We can spin off that, right? Could be anything. I don't necessarily like that when somebody's bull rushing me, but you guys who have clean lead leg side kicks might be a good option for you. But the option I like as a tall gangly person is when people want to duck their head on these punches instead of following with the cross, I'm gonna follow with a knee. So you get those guys who wanna hunker and rush in. Don't waste your time punching them in the top of the skull. Knee their head off, right? So we're gonna go jab, retreating hook. I'm gonna pick up my power side knee, my heel is close to my butt, and I'm <clears throat> extending my hips. Good, compact knee, and then I'm gonna put my foot right back down. So let's not go crazy on it. We don't want to get bowled over. <sighs> right back in the fight. So we're going to go jab, hook, power side knee, and make sure we're back in the fight. We're going to do that same thing, just replacing the cross with a quick knee. On my go. Go. <laughs> Reset. Go. <laughs> Reset, go, a reset, go, reset, let's go two more here, just like that, go, one more, go, good, and time, shake it out real quick, grab some water. Now, knee is just one option there. Obviously, especially you guys who like to spar a little bit more, you know there's a lot there. If I do hit this hook and it knocks their head to the side, I've got high kicks, right? If I don't feel like my feet are under me well, but he is ducking his head, I've got uppercuts. If they're right in my chest, I've got elbows. Um, tons of things we can do off that, but this is just kind of my my range finding, right? I go jab, if they stay in place, long punches. If they follow me, hook cross. If they follow me and they're going under my punches, I don't want to get taken down, so I want to fire that knee. But all of it starts off of establishing our jab. So we go jab, retreat, jab, cross, jab, retreat, hook, cross, or jab, retreat, hook, knee. So what I want to do for our last kind of round here, and then I'll give you guys a little bit of time if anyone wants to ask questions, or if there's anything that I sputtered out on, so it sounded like the connection wasn't great at some points, that I can repeat. We're gonna do a full three minute shadow boxing round. I want you to stair step up. We've done a lot today, but every time you get on them, every time you've kind of reset and you've hydrated, and you come back on the mats, let's stair step, right? Let's make sure, fighting stance, chin down, hands up, head movement, foot movement, feints, jabs, jab crosses. But now you have a series to work. Once you've started to establish that jab and you're starting to land it, we have a couple of things we can do. It doesn't have to be the only thing you do, but I want you to play with it. So we're gonna go three minutes, Establish your stair step, good fighting stance, good movement, good feints, good jabs, good crosses, and then start opening up. Start playing with the stuff we did today, 
the stuff Forrest has been teaching you, the stuff that you learned uh, from Dallas the other day. Start putting it all in, but do it once we're all in the right place. All of our pieces are working together. That's when we become real, real dangerous. All right, we're gonna go three minutes here. We're gonna do it together. Three, two, one, go. So first things, fighting stance. My knees are bent, my hands are up, my chin is down, my head is moving. Not just side to side, up and down, in and out. My feet are moving. I'm starting to faint. I'm starting to feel that I can throw wherever my feet are, and I'm jabbing. Bah! Fainting that jab, bam, and I'm sticking it. Now we're adding in that cross. Now we're gonna start adding in everything else we know, including the combos we did today, including other combinations you know. Again, if you have kicks, you can start working them in. You wanna work that double jab retreating hook combination that you learned the other day, do it. But this is the time. Psychics in front of you guys. It's not good. <clears throat> we are halfway done. If you're starting to get tired, if you're starting to feel like your arms are coming out funny, reestablish. Chin down, hands up, moving my head, moving my feet. Especially in, in a cage match or a sparring match, you can buy yourself a lot of recovery time if you can sell a couple of baits. <laughs> Starting to <sighs> make this guy think, maybe I shouldn't rush in. And what I'm really thinking is, oh God, my lungs hurt. <sighs> oh, he's biting on that faint. You have 45 seconds. Again, if you get lost, back to the basics. Establish your jab. Do you like front kicks, like teeps? Establish some of those. <laughs> 10 seconds. Finish strong here, guys. <laughs> Win the round, lots of punches, good head movement. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Good, and reset. Good in time, guys. Shake it out, get some water. You earned it. Oh, good stuff. So that is something that No matter what level you're at, we should all be doing. Just getting comfortable doing this will save you a lot of pain and it'll make all your strikes better. Um, that is really what I had for you guys today. I'm gonna go through kind of the curriculum one more time, although I said it like a million times. Stair stepping into shadow boxing, fighting stance. That means Knees are bent, hands are up, chin is down. I don't care if you're here, I don't care if you're here, but all those things should be in play. My head is moving. Not big, not predictably, but just a little bit. I'd rather get a glancing blow than a big punch. And then I'm thinking about moving my feet. And when I'm moving, my knees stay bent, and ideally my chin stays down. So we're not doing these. Then I faint. This is both to start to see what this guy or girl is going to do 
but it's also making sure my body's working right. I don't want to make the first punch of this fight something weird, right? Where I'm leaning. So a feint is a good kind of like low risk way. Oh yeah, good posture on that. I feel like I can throw that out there. I feel like I've got my feet under me. It's kind of my check-in. Are my strikes coming out good? Are they defending in a way that I want to respond to? Then we're looking to establish our jabs and our jab crosses. And then we start establishing whatever our game is, right? For you guys, it may be different than it is for me, um, but you will never regret good fighting stance and face, I promise you. And then as far as our combinations, we did our jab, bounce out, jab, cross, and then we're moving. We also did our jab, check hook into our cross or into our power side knee. If you guys have questions on that stuff, or you just have general questions for me, feel free to ask them. Um, but first of all, thank you so much for joining me. I know that shadow boxing is not always the most like sexy thing. It's not always the most fun thing. Um, but as you saw, we burned an hour just shadow boxing. If you or if I or Forrest, if we did that every day, everything in our game would get better. Um, so if you take nothing else from this, shadow boxing is a good three minute warm up that you can never ever go wrong with if you just put your pieces in the right order. Um, I'm gonna hand it back to you guys. If you guys have any questions for us, if you have any input, um, feel free to let me know and then um, I'll talk to you guys out at the end. Jeff, thank you, I appreciate it. That's always good to uh, uh, test the fundamentals and have a really good way to kill time you know, improving on those. It's almost like you're not working, you know, but I, I put AirPods in and, and uh, listen to music and I'm gone, you know? Yeah. That's the thing. So I'm, it's really, uh, it's really cool to find out good ways to make it um, uh, effective and something that you can, I, I actually use as an escape. And yeah, absolutely. And, and as you said, I use it. I try to make this a warm up. Like if I'm going to do a weightlifting routine, especially right now, people are, uh, locked up and I have the, the maps to myself, put some music on and I'll shadow box for three minutes. And even just that, you can start to feel the things that you're doing wrong and how to fix them without the pressure. Like when somebody's punching you in the face, you default to whatever has been working or whatever has not been working, right? But when right. it's just you, we can start, I mean, I know for me, it's this. More tired I get, this lead hand creeps down. So I have to start thinking, all right, touch my face a little bit, jab and touch. Um, those things we can start to fix when we're just working on our own. Somebody posted in chat. I want to make sure that I've got them. I will just say thank you. Thank you, guys. This was awesome. As a newbie to this, I got to read my revision. Learn properly. It's going to help you with my shadow boxing. Awesome, guys. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm glad you guys had a good experience with that. Um, Again, uh, I know that it sucks to not be able to put hands on each other, not to be able to hit mitts. You guys are lucky. A lot of you guys have um, bags, but man, nobody likes to like spend an hour shadow boxing. We all want to do the sexy sparring and all that. This is your time. Um, this is your time to put in the work and like come back with clean movement, come back with those little habits, right? This, just a little bit of head movement can be the difference between getting blasted in the mouth and getting skimmed with a punch. Um, again, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Forrest, for having me. Um, I would love, love, love when the world is semi-normal again to come out and do this in person and then to have you guys come out to us as well. We've chatted about that in the past, but I think make it happen. Dude, thank you so much, Jeff. This was awesome. Um, tons of fun. Uh, yeah, shout boxing is always the thing that's hard to, to teach, so uh, I'll definitely be pulling a Jeet Kune Do on this and stealing this, making it my own. I hope you guys all enjoy Forrest's uh, shadow boxing routine um, <laughs> that I created. That's um, how it goes, man. My, my MMA coach taught this to me, and I, you know, I, I, it's slightly modified because the style is a little bit different than mine, but, like, good stuff is good stuff. You can put it wherever you can, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. No, it, it, felt, it felt great to um, – yeah, to have that little stair stepper. I definitely uh, enjoyed that. So awesome.
Well, thank you guys. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, if if this lockdown continues, let's do it again. But ideally, we see each other in person soon. Yeah, hopefully. Awesome, man. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. See you guys soon. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Two galleries. <gasps> oh. Unless anybody else has any more questions or anything, feel free to. I'll hang out until everybody's kind of, kind of gone. Out of curiosity, Jeff, um, you, uh, uh, from what I can tell, we're we're kind of having to wait till like the 18th to possibly open. Is that is that what you're kind of getting? Yeah, um, that is what my understanding is right now. But the, what I kind of heard as far as like the governor's talk was basically like, they're gonna open X number of things and then we'll see. Um, so I'm not putting any stock in anything. Yeah. Um, but my understanding is the 18th is the earliest potential day. Got it. Jeez. Uh, I was I like, I was like, when they said like opening restaurants and did they say, uh, I forgot what it is on the first, uh, the on the first, but I was like, oh, surely small gyms like us will fit in that. And then, uh, you know, and then, yeah, everything I can find says no. And so it's like, freaking heck. I unfortunately think that given the, given the way that things started closing down, fitness centers were on the, like, were the first thing that got closed down. Um, so I suspect we will also be the first the last thing to reopen unfortunately yeah. which like it sucks but it also sort of makes sense like <laughs> you there is no more disease transmission than when you're sweating in each other's mouths so yeah yeah i've got but it um, sucks, man. yeah there there's uh some cool little resources some different talk i mean there's a million one talks going around if you've got anything <clears throat> but just people that uh, are presenting how they're going to approach restarting it and there there have been some really good ideas shared like one one person was saying um to put beach towels down like two beach towels because a that kind of helps mark off the area although we're going to mark it as well but b that way everybody's sweat goes onto their own towel so yeah. so that way it kind of helps with the cleaning like there, there's a handful of uh, ideas um i don't know if you guys have kind of what you're planning on doing to reopen, but. Uh, I don't know, I, I feel really, um, cause we don't really have much of like a bag set up here. The vast majority, all of our non-fitness classes are like, you know, at minimum you're holding pads for each other. Yeah. So I'm, it's really hard to like, you know, I wanna do stop whatever. The, I'm recording right now. I'm gonna stop the recording just in case, cause I wanna be able to share this. If